Hello and welcome to my last video in my ZBrush sculpting series. So now we're going to look at how to make a model 3D printable. So something that's very important I talked about at the end of my third video is making sure that all of the objects that make up your mesh are combined. If you made a separate object for clothing or whatever, make sure they're all combined. Otherwise, um, there might be a small gap between like her shirt and it will cause her or the uh, 3D printing uh, slicer to fill it solid potentially. Like that's why I had a problem with why did FDM printing. Um, it would make all these solid elements. Anyway, the way that I fixed that is I DynaMesh at the very, very end. By clicking on that, it is going to make sure that everything is one object. Holding shift and then clicking F will show you the mesh here. And as you can tell, it's all cohesive. It's all the same color. If it's not all the same color, that's fine. Sometimes ZBrush will still recognize that there's different objects that have merged, but it'll treat them as one, which is what you want. Now, I don't want it to be very high poly, so I'll go to um, Z plugin, Decimation Master. I'll pre-process current. Once it's done processing, it takes about a minute or two. You can click on your decimation level. I usually do 250,000 polygons or points, and um, that works fantastic for me usually. I've already done that. I don't want you to have to wait for two minutes while that processes, and I exported it. So I went to Tool, Export, and then you can choose, um, you're, you're going to want to do an OBJ. That's me the file type you're going to pick. I already have it here as Cat Lady. So now I'm going to open this in Mesh Mixer, which is a free software you can download by Autodesk and I can import that file. So click on import, go to wherever your file is, mine is in downloads, and I have my mesh. So the reason she's on her back is because Autodesk labels the axes different than ZBrush does. To fix that, I go to edit, transform, rotate X, I put in 90, and there we go, now she's upright. Oof, she is not cute. <laughs> okay. Anyway, now I can see her dimensions here. So it says that she is 68 millimeters tall. That is way too tall for a miniature. She should be closer to about 30 because her 28 millimeter scale means that she's 28 millimeters from the bottom of her foot to eye level. So with her ears and stuff, probably adds a millimeter or two. So I'm actually going to put 31. There we go. This is more proper scaling. Click on accept. You can verify the height by hitting analysis, measure, make sure your type is from point to point, direction is in the y-axis, and here you go. So her point is attached to her knee, which isn't very helpful. You can fix that by holding control, tapping on her toe, and there you go. It's about, it's 28.59 millimeters, which is plenty close enough for me. Done. Now I'm gonna attach a base to her. Import. Pen. And then I have uh, bases here shared with my patrons. You do not need to be a patron in order to get these. There's lots of free examples on Thingiverse. So it's a little far away. Mess Mixture is trying to bring it closer to my model. I like that. It's more convenient. I click on yes. And I have an object browser showing each of my models. To move it closer to her, I'll hit edit, transform. I can grab on these arrows to bring it closer to her. go. So I don't want to like completely obscure her feet. Granted, this is not a great model or even a good one. <laughs> so that's fine. Just make sure there's no gap between the bottom of your model and your um, base because otherwise it's going to print in midair and it's going to be a mess. Except now that you have both of these, you can click on both of them either by hitting, um, I do shift, I hold down shift and I click. So now they're both highlighted. I make sure my edit tab is selected. And click on combine. And now it's one solid piece. Finally, I export to an STL. So by default, it's STL format. That's the one I like doing. I use STL format over OBJ because I notice the files are usually smaller. I'm not sure why. I haven't looked into it. I do binary. And I'll call our cat lady print. There we are. Fantastic. So that concludes the series. Um, if you missed anything, the first one is ZBrush Basics. The second one is brushes. These brushes are not just in ZBrush. They're also going to be in Blender. There's going to be equivalents there, so you can apply the same logic. 
And then the third one is going over how I sculpted this. Jeez, not the greatest model, but um, it shows you how to have different objects, extract, to make clothing very quickly, um, basic brushes, masking, all kinds of goodness. That's why my third video is 20 minutes. Just bear with me. I have a lot them going through to make sure that um, you don't miss anything like hotkeys and stuff. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad you watched. And if you have any questions, do make sure you leave a comment. I love to answer them. I know it's not the easiest program to learn and I hope to help you along on your sculpting journey. So have a great day.